Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right, we have an Asvine V169 in the uh, transparent green with gold trim. We have an Asvine V169 in the uh, transparent coffee with gold trim. We have an Asvine P36. We have a Montegrappa Extra High Tech. We have an Anoto Magna Classic in the chased green. We have a Cross Peerless 125. Uh, we have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Egyptian marble. We have a uh, Anoto a Longitude. We have a Tuiko Seishu Dragon in red. And we have a Tuiko Seishu Dragon in green. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up in a little bit more detail. So this is the Asvine V169. I did have it on last week's video. These are actually very good, affordable overlay pens. If you like the transparent look of the pen with a gold or silver overlay, then this is actually a really affordable pen at around £45 Euros or dollars. Um, it is a vac filling pen as well. Uh, so so it, it's actually a really good good price um, These do actually come with uh, Asvine nibs. Uh, these are steel nibs, but this is gold plated It's a medium nib with an ABS plastic feed, uh, but it's a power vac filler You've you've got transparency. You've got an ink window some screw threads uh, and a concave section uh, You can post the cap, but you do need to be a little bit careful because you've got that vac knob there um, and I think over time you're going to mark this if you're not careful. Uh, however, you can post the cap if you want. It's called transparent green because it's got a green transparency in that acrylic. Uh, but uh, it actually allows me to then ink it up with a green ink, uh, which I am liking. So I have that one inked up with me uh, this week. Uh, I have uh, another Asvine V169, and this is the transparent coffee. And you can see that there, if you look at the cap, it's again got this sort of brown transparency on the acrylic. Again, very affordable, around about £45, Euros, dollars, uh, vac filling pen. Um, I do like this overlay. Uh, it's, I believe it's a steel overlay, then it's plated in either gold or rhodium. Um, you do have a transparency, you have an ink window, screw threads, concave section to stop your fingers slipping down onto nib feed. Uh, you have a medium Asvine steel nib, uh, which is gold plated and a plastic feed. Uh, again, you can post the, the cap on this as well. It does make it very back weighted though. It's not, again, something I typically would want to do. Uh, I don't like back weighted pens as much. And I don't like like super long pens. Uh, I think if if the pen body itself is long, it doesn't bother me so much. But then when you're adding a, a cap to what is a relatively long body anyway, it's just going to become a bit of a wand. So for me, uh, I do like that. But you can see that transparent coffee color there in that cap. Um, it, it is quite uh, an interesting uh, color. So that actually allows me to ink it up with a coffee or brown colored ink. Uh, I have the Asvine P36 inked up again uh, this week. However, I have changed the ink. Uh, as much as I like the uh, dominant industry to savour it in terms of colour, I find it a very dry writing ink. Um, I've actually put a very much lighter green ink in it this week. Uh, again, I, I'm not so sure that that ink is going to remain, but let's see. Um, maybe I will empty that and put a darker green ink in and find something like I, I was tempted to to ink it up with Darmine Meadow um but I have that inked up in some other pens uh I actually have it in this pen actually so it was what other greens do I put in there I, I've got lots of greens but I just couldn't really think of one that I thought I wanted to write with at this moment in time um 
this isn't a power back filler it's a piston so it, you are taking up a lot of that body uh, there with that piston mechanism um but it is a transparent pen it's titanium as well you've got the threads uh for the screw cap uh this comes with a bock nib but you can get it with an asphine nib i got this with a medium nib with a plastic feed um you can post the cap but you do have to be more careful being a piston that if you twist this it's trying to get it off it is going to twist the piston so you do just need to be a little bit careful on piston filling pens when uh, the cap uh, doesn't post uh, further on down the body you also have to be a little bit careful is a lot of caps although they have a cap band they don't have it right at the end of the cap so you do have to equally be a little bit careful because you might chip that off over time as well um, it's just something that I have heard of. I've not experienced that myself, uh, but uh, I have seen pens over the years, um, some vintage, some not, some more modern, where the, uh, the, the cap there will chip. I think mostly it's down to abuse or dropping the pen or dropping the cap, but it is something that I have seen on images before, so just something to bear in mind. The next pen inked up is the Montegrappa Extra. It's a 1930 model, but it's called the High Tech because it's called the High High Tech because of the High Tech trim. So it's a titanium trim. Um, you have the Montegrappa uh, logo there, 1912. Um, you have carbon fiber here on the body as well, and you have titanium section with a number eight size nib. I managed to pick this up for a relatively good price um, to what compared to what it would normally sell at at retail uh, or full retail price. You can post the cap if you want to. Uh, I don't mind so much on this one because it is a cartridge converter. Um, so for me, uh, yes, I can. Uh, it does have an uh, ebonite feed there, so you can see the contour of that feed. Uh, and then the obviously the carbon fiber there as well. It's quite uh, an interesting weave. Um, this pen, as I said, I, I got for a relatively good price. So uh, very glad that I was able to pick that up. I picked it up from a US seller on eBay. Uh, he had a bunch of these uh, selling for a really good price. I did get stung on import uh, into the UK, which was uh, basically added about another 25% to the cost. But I'd already factored that into the pen cost so uh it wasn't as bad uh but i still picked it up for way less than i could have done uh if i had bought it in the uk at retail the next pen uh, inked up is the anoto magna classic and this is a modern anoto and and i don't have any vintage anotos um I do like the uh, modern um, offering from Anoto, uh, the pen uh, company. Um, this is a Magna Classic I bought from Roy at Izod. Uh, you probably know the story by now. I picked it up secondhand. The previous owner had ground the nib to a crisp metallic, uh, removed most of the tipping. Uh, I did buy a replacement nib in the end uh, from Anoto at the London Pen Show in March this year. So this is the replacement nib, and it writes super wet. Really glad uh, I did buy it. Uh, you can see there that I have pretty much exhausted most of that ink. Uh, I'm debating on whether to fill it back up or not. I do love writing with this pen, uh, and I do like the green ink in it. But uh, I also have other pens I need to ink up. So uh, unfortunately, sometimes you have to uh, clean out a pen and... I think I might have to clean out this pen and put it into storage for a while. Um, it will be a shame, but then again, I have, like I say, lots of other pens I want to ink up. And more recently, I've inked up a bunch of Asvine pens as well. So um, it's going to take a while to write through those. So I, I think I will probably um, look to rotate some of my pens a little bit more. The next pen uh, inked up this week is the Cross Peerless 125. A really beautiful uh, guilloche uh, going on there, sort of texture, or really a barley texture with a Swarovski uh, crystal there in the cap finial. 
Um, interesting clip. I'm not a fan of this clip uh, because of the bridge type uh, shape to it. Um, and also that the word is upside down. You almost have to be a left-hander to actually read cross on it. But I love the pen. I love how it writes. I love the pen more so because it's got a, a sailor-made cross peerless 125 nib. So this actually writes really, really well. Uh, it is a cartridge converter. So you can see that there. Uh, you can post the cap. And uh, I think I did show this last week. Uh, you can post it quite deeply um, if you really want to push it on your can, but I find that I, I wrestle with it. Um, I still find, even though it posts quite deeply, it is still back-weighted. So, again, it, it's just something I don't typically do with my pens. I, I typically want a pen that that is weighted just about right uh, without needing to post the cap to it. Um, I, I'm sure some of you are the opposite way around where you want a light body uh, or maybe a, a weighted body but a very light cap so you can post it. Um, but for me, it's all about the body of the pen rather than the body and the cap uh, when I'm writing with it. The next pen here inked up is the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico and this is in the Egyptian marble. And I said I want to ink up some more pens and I think I might actually start to ink up my other Medici Il Magnificos. I've got the red marble, I've got the blue lapis lazuli, and I've got the black and gold vein one, the black marble uh, version. So uh, this is the fourth version that I have. I don't have all the colors. Um, this did speak to me a little bit more. So um, certainly I, I think the coloring of the images online look a little bit more gold. Uh, on the, the marble here um, than in real life. But I still like this quite a lot. It is quite a, a beautiful marble. Um, and then it comes with this brass clip, uh, power vac knob, and section. You've got the hook safe lock mechanism on it. You have an 18 karat gold Visconti uh, medium nib there uh, with the ABS plastic feed. It is a power vac filler. Um, you can post the cap if you want to, but it's super back weighted because of the brass cap. Uh, also, the hook safe lock mechanism inside the cap, it's difficult to see, but it's plastic. So plastic on metal uh, will eventually wear out that plastic over time. So you do need to be a little bit careful on that because it's a, uh, a metal hook safe lock mechanism on a plastic hook safe lock sort of socket. So uh, it could wear over time. I have had it wear on my red marble. I did need to get that repaired by Visconti. They repaired it perfectly fine. Um, but it's now something I'm just a little bit more aware of uh, when it comes down to not only the Magnifico uh, range of pens, but also any of the Viscontis that have a hook safe lock mechanism where you've got metal... Um, uh, sort of on the the body or the section there because uh it is going to wear over time the next pen inked up here is the anoto a longitude and again I, this is a pen that i really like i know this is not for everybody uh it's got a ship's wheel there uh you've got the rope you've got sort of waves of the ocean you have a massive anchor clip there uh, and then you can see here the, if I get it on camera properly, you see the waves on the cat band and then it says longitude. Uh, and this was, I think, the constitution. Um, and when you unscrew it, you have not only the LE number there, but you have the uh, latitude and longitude of where this ship actually sank. Uh, and uh, the, the metal parts are actually parts recovered from the uh, shipwreck. Now, um, it does have a uh, number seven size Anoto nib. Um, and if I unscrew the body there, uh, it is a cartridge converter. Sometimes I call these a number six size nib. Uh, the, the reason why uh, sometimes I call it number six, even though technically it's a number seven, is that Bok typically won't make number six and number eight nibs. They don't make number seven. Uh, but Anoto do ask them to make a number seven is there a huge difference between a number six and a number seven or a number seven and a number eight? Not a huge difference. It's one millimeter at the collar here of where the nib goes in. 
Uh, typically, you will notice a lot of difference between a 6 and an 8 nib, but not a 6 and a 7. So a lot of time, I actually really think these are more a number 6 nib. Um, maybe I should actually pull the nib at one point and actually measure it. I'm sure it will be a number 7, but 7 millimeters. Uh, you can post the cap here, but it's very back weighted. That is a heavy cap. Um, so again, it's not something I do regularly, but uh, you can post it if you want. Um, maybe it's good for your muscles. Uh, sort of uh, weightlifters and that probably wouldn't have an issue with it, or anybody that goes to the gym, uh, then then maybe it would be something that you're used to, maybe. The next pen here is the uh, Tweeko uh, Seishu Dragon in red. Uh, a beautiful Dragon Makie Yurushi pen. Uh, beautiful pen. Glad I picked this up at the London Pen Show. I was going there to not pick anything up. And I had said to a number of friends, I would not buy a pen at the pen show. And then I bought two. So when you say I'm not going to buy a pen, maybe you should actually qualify that and say a pen or multiple pens. Uh, because I did come away with two. Um, but you can see why. Um, it has a number six size Yovo 14 karat gold medium nib. Uh, it is a cartridge converter and that is inked up uh, with a KWZ ink. And i uh, screw that back on. Um, great size in my hand. I do like it. It does have a little bit of a step down. It does have some threads there that are quite pronounced that you do feel. Uh, but uh, for me, it, it's a beautiful pen. But when I was there at the pen show... I knew that if I was going to pick one of these up, it would be hard to pick between the two colours. And I thought I probably would pick the red. But as I found more recently, strangely enough, the green has been actually crying out for me to write with it a little bit more. Uh, so the green is starting to become a little bit more of a favourite. So I did luckily pick up both of these. And again, they are just really, really beautiful pens. Uh, I... Just so glad that I, I picked these up. Th these were the prototypes, not the numbered edition. So these were about half the price of the numbered edition. Again, 14 karat gold, a uh, Yovo uh, nib. Did I say Bok on this one? I can't remember. Uh, if I did, it is a Yovo nib. Uh, cartridge converter. I've got to be a bit careful because there's some ink on that nib. I don't want to shake that ink off. So there you go. It's a full cartridge converter. I just had to re-ink it because I was very low. Uh, so there is a little bit of nib creep. I'm just going to wipe that off now, just so that it next time I actually open that cap, it doesn't go everywhere. Because knowing my luck, it probably will. So that's my 10 pens currently inked this week. I think let's now go and do a writing sample. So the first pen here is the Asvine V169, and uh, this is in the transparent green with gold trim. So we'll do uh, an ink swatch here and have to say I am absolutely loving uh, how this pen writes. I love the ink combination as well. So this is the Asvine V169. This is a Chinese pen, made pen. Uh, it's the transparent green and uh, it is a gold trim. Uh, and it is a medium and uh, it is a uh, steel uh, asphine nib. And uh, the ink in here is uh, Diamine Ultra Green, which I have to say is certainly an ultra green uh, and it's becoming my ultra green um or my penultimate green it, it's it's a green that i'm really liking a lot so for me that's a good combination the next thing up pen here is a, an asvine v169 in the transparent coffee with gold trim so we'll do an ink swatch and this is again another nice combination i like the ink pairing here uh, to the, the name of the pen. So this is the Asvine V169 in the transparent uh, coffee. 
uh, with gold trim and it's a medium and it's a steel ash fine nib and these are vac fillers and then the ink in here is a kwz cappuccino and i did spell it right there i typically <laughs> misspell cappuccino I, I don't know why i think it's cap a chino so i always think it's an a after the double p when it's a u it should be cappuccino the next pen is the Asvine uh, P36 piston filling pen. So we'll do an ink swatch on this. Now, I did swap the ink out oh, on this, and it is newly inked up. So let's see if we can just disperse some of that ink a little bit there. I probably should have done a, a, a test uh, writing sample on, on another piece of paper uh, first. So this is an Asvine P36 Titanium. Uh, it's a medium and it's a Bok uh, steel nib. Now, I did say earlier on uh, that I might actually change the ink. I wanted a bright green ink, but I think this is a little too bright. If it was in a broad nib, I think it wouldn't be too bad. Maybe once it's dry, it won't be too bad. But this is a uh, Monteverde. And it's a uh, key lime pie, which is an ink that I've liked a lot in the past. I've not written with it a lot lately. So uh, I was sort of thinking long and hard what green ink I should put in there. I wanted a green ink and uh, I could have put any color ink in, but for some reason I wanted another green ink. And I just thought, you know what, I could go with Diamond Apple Glory or I could go with key lime pie, and I thought I'd try key lime pie this time around. The next pen inked up is a Montegrappa Extra uh, 1930 High Tech. So we'll do an, an ink swatch here. And this, again, is a nice writing pen. Uh, very pleased about this, even though I did get stung 25% extra on import tax and duty uh, into the UK. I, I still got it for a good price. I'm glad of that. Uh, this is the Montegrappa Extra. It is a 1930, uh, but it's called the High Tech. Uh, and it's a medium and it's an 18 cap gold nib. And then the ink in here is KWZ cappuccino and i'd say that this actually feels as though it writes uh wetter and slightly wider than that of the asvine v169 it might be because it's got a gold nib and it's slightly flexible not massively but it might be to do with that but i i think it just it does write a little bit better i would say the next pen inked up is the anoto magna classic in chase green So we'll do an ink swatch here and I always wonder is this inked up with Darmine Meadow or Darmine Apple Glory and and if it looks a little bit more of a darker green to start with it's normally Darmine Meadow and that's what this one is. So this is uh, the Anoto Magna Classic uh, in the chased green or jade i've also seen it called uh, it's a medium and it's an 18 count gold uh bock nib and the ink as i mentioned is a uh, diamine meadow which is a lovely ink um i think at one point i did put diamine apple glory in this pen and i liked it but i also put it in another pen so i then inked this up with diamine meadow and i've just stuck with diamine meadow ever since the next pen inked up is the uh, Cross Peerless 125. So we'll do another ink swatch. And when I bought this pen, I just didn't know. I, I kind of wanted a dark ink, and I bought it at the same, roughly around the same time as the Montegrappa Extra High Tech. 
So I inked that up with, obviously, the KBZ Cappuccino. And I was thinking, well, I can't really ink this up with a brown, another brown ink. I could ink it up maybe with a red ink, or I could go with a purple ink. And I went with this purple, and uh, I've just been inking it up ever since. Uh, so this is the Cross Peerless 125, and it's a medium, and it's an 18 cat gold nib. Uh, made uh, by Sailor for Cross. And then the ink in here is Venustus. And uh, it is Vinaccia. But that is a, a, a very nice purple ink. I, I keep thinking about maybe putting a Mont Blanc Lavender Purple in there. I think it's also a very similar colour ink. Uh, although I think it might come out a little bit darker um, with Mont Blanc Lavender Purple. The next pen inked up is the Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in uh, the Egyptian marble. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And this is a, a light ink. Uh, it's it's a, a dark yellow. Um, you could call it maybe a slightly different color. Um, but I think it's dark, dark yellow-ish um, that... That, that you would probably call it. You could maybe call it an eight, apricot, apricot uh, coloured ink. So this is the Visconti uh, Medici Il Magnifico uh, in the Egyptian marble. And it's a medium and it's an 18 cat gold nib. And uh, the ink in here is KWZ El Dorado. And I don't normally go for yellow inks, but a friend a while ago was asking me if I'd had this ink, and I, I said no. Uh, I guess actually another color you could call it is a mango color, uh, and uh, actually that I could actually ink that up with Lamy Mango uh, when this runs out. Perhaps maybe that's what I'll do because I think that's a slightly darker shade and may look a little bit easier to read on the page. So either that or maybe. KWZ Gold Antiqua or um, another, maybe KWZ Old Gold or KWZ Honey, maybe. Um, I'll have to think about that one. The next pen inked up is the Anoto Longitude. So we'll do another ink swatch here. And this is a very, very uh, nice uh, colour ink. And uh, one of my favourite turquoise uh, or cerulean blue coloured inks. So this is the Anoto Longitude. Uh, Longitude. There you go. Um, and it's a medium and it's an 18 count gold uh, nib. Uh, Anoto nib made by Bok. And then the ink in here is a Pelican Edelstein Topaz. But that it is one of my favourite uh, light blue, uh, turquoise, cerulean blue coloured inks. The next pen inked up is the Tweeko Seishu Dragon in Red. So we'll do uh, an ink swatch. And this is, again, a nice writing nib. So this is the uh, Tweeko Seishu. Um, and it's the uh, dragon in red. And it's a uh, medium. Uh, and it's a, a 14 cat gold nib, uh, Yovo nib. And then the ink in here is a KWZ Thief's Red. Now I've been on a little bit more of a, a KWZ kick lately. Uh, I've been wanting a few more of their inks. I do like their inks. Uh, I like how they flow, uh, how they're lubricated. And uh, I just not necessarily liked a lot of the colours. Uh, lots of varying shades of green uh, or red. So, but there are a few of their inks I really do like. The next uh, ink, uh, pen inked up here is, again, a Tweeko Seishu Dragon in 
green. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And again, this nib writes very nicely. Uh, I, I do like how this pen writes. A nib can definitely make or break how a pen uh, feels and how you whether or not you want to write with it. So this is the uh, Tweeko Seishu Dragon in uh, green. And uh, it's a uh, medium and it's 14 karat gold. Yovo nib. And then uh, the ink in here is KWZ Grass Green. Uh, I think I would have preferred this called a different name, but I like the colour of the ink and I think that's what uh, really makes uh, the difference. Um, so I think let's go and take a look at these pens inked up one more time. Uh, we have an Asphine V166 transparent green in a gold trim in a medium steel nib inked up with Barmine Ultra Green. We have an Asphine V166 transparent coffee in a gold trim in a medium steel nib inked up with KWZ Cappuccino. We have an Asphine P36 titanium in a medium box steel nib inked up with Monteverde Key Lime Pie. We have a Montegrappa Extra High Tech in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with KWZ Cappuccino. We have an Anoto Magna Classic in the Chase Green in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with Diamine Meadow. Uh, we have a Cross Peerless 125 in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with Venustus Vinaccia. We have a Visconti Medici Il Magnifico in the Egyptian marble in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with KWZ El Dorado. We have an Anoto Longitude in a medium 18 count gold nib inked up with Pelican Edelsign Topaz. We have a Tweeko Seishu Dragon in red in a medium 14 count gold nib inked up with KWZ Thief's Red. And then we have a Tweeko Seishu Dragon in green in a medium 14 count gold nib inked up with KWZ Grass Green. Uh, now, this is an interesting uh, um, segue because this is the very last page in this book. Uh, or notepad, I should say. And the reason why I say that is that this is a 128-page Oxford notepad that I use. Very difficult for me to get hold of these now. Um, and I have a stash of these. But 120 pages, uh, I write with this uh, exclusively on uh, my currently inked videos. So 52 videos a year. That's 52 weeks in the year. So uh, you're looking at 104 pages normally out of 120 so uh, it takes me two years to get through one of these if I'm using it just for currently inked but I've now come to the end of this pad so uh, I will have to crack open another pad so that's my uh, currently inked pens for this week thanks for watching please like comment subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video bye bye